All right, hello everyone. I'm a little bit late getting started tonight. Had a busy day. We'll give everybody a chance to uh, come in. Um, I need to finish getting set up here a little bit. I've got the board set up and uh, let's get these characters put together here. My camera setup has changed slightly from doing uh, Mage Night last Thursday. So let's get everybody set up here. Get you going down here. Uh, let's see. All right, looks like that's all on the screen. Okay. And Jetic, let's get you down here as well. It's going to be a little off the screen. Hmm. Everybody in tight. How's that? Maybe, well, we can't see the names of the items, but we can see the icons and the text. All right, we're going to call that good enough. Hey, Treasure Amazon, how you doing? Hello, welcome to the stream. All right, we are playing Gloomhaven tonight. Uh, scenario 9 of the Capital Intrigue campaign. Um, community-driven campaign for Gloomhaven, the second one. This is 9 of 10, so second to last scenario here. Um, I am all set up here component-wise, and let's get to the text. Um, all right, so if you were here with us last week, last week we finished number eight, Breaking and Endering. We uh, had some guards to help us out, and the um, we were breaking into Councilman Jarek's house. And we all got carted off to the courtroom, basically. Let's just read the conclusion here real quick. Jarek proves quite resilient, but with enough effort, your attempts, 
your attacks break through his defenses and knock him sprawled across the floor. His incantations interrupted and his dagger clattering away from his hand. He's still alive, as is Miles, but neither of them are in good shape. You reach down and grab the dagger just as a contingent of soldiers burst through the door, stopping any further fighting. A Volrath emerges from the squad and looks down at the bloodied figure of Councilman Jarek. What is the meaning of this? she asks. These men attacked me in my own home, Jarek yells. They are crazed ruffians. Arrest them. The Valrath looks skeptical as you try to explain the situation. I'm calling an emergency meeting of the council, and we'll get to the bottom of this, she says. Bring all of them to the guild hall. All right, so our rewards for that scenario was the Black Knife, which we gave to uh, Reginald. The Brute, he's got the Black Knife during your melee attack, add Curse to a single attack. All right, and then five experience for each ally city guard left on the map. And we had, I can't remember, one or two. I know we had one, and then there was a question whether Miles counted. I think we decided that he did count. And so um, Furwick did just barely level up. He's now level 5. Everyone else is still at level 4. All right. There is no city event. There's no event in between these two. We go straight into 9. Capital Intrigue number 9. Legal Entanglements. No requirements, but there is a goal to convince the jury of your innocence. So this uh, this one's going to go quite different. Uh, there's a lot of special rules here. I've scanned them once or twice as I set up, but I'm going to read them again to everyone just so you know what's going on and to remind me what's going on. Introduction. The Valrath merchant seems suspicious enough not to just throw you back into the mouth of antiquity again. So we're not going straight back to jail. We're going to have a trial. So you count that as a success. You are shackled and brought through the well-lit streets of the central city to the seat of power in White Oak, the Great Merchants Guild Hall. You are brought immediately. Hold on a sec. Um, actually, no, I was going to have you talking to my wife off camera here. Uh, I need the miniatures over there. I forgot to pull out the miniatures for all of our characters. Thank you. I will grab those in a minute. Okay. Sorry about that. You are brought immediately into a large meeting room where a number of influential merchants of the city have already gathered, apparently preparing to cast judgment on your circumstances. There are 12 jurors in total sitting on both sides of the courtroom. A judge sits directly in front of you, and his disposition gives off a distinct hostility toward you. Uh, real quick, this is the judge right here, our D20, and then along each side of the room here with the wound markers and number tokens are the 12 jurors. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and let's pull out our characters. We may reset these, but for right now, let's just get them in the right place. And where is our brute? There we go. There's Reginald. All right. All right, I cannot fathom why Councilwoman Larissa thought it appropriate to gather us all at this late hour, the judge begins. But here we are, so let's get this over with quickly. Apparently these ruffians claim Councilman Jarek had Councilman Windmere killed and took his place as part of some plot for the Sin Ross Syndicate to take over the Merchants Guild. It sounds rather far-fetched and nothing more than a creative way for these cut purses to get out of petty theft. 
Looking to your right, you see Miles. You see Miles' captain is preparing to argue against your claims. Surely intending to emphasize that you are lowbrow criminals not worthy of the council's time. This is going to be an uphill battle, and you don't have much time to talk your way through it. So our special rules. Place a random number token face down on all hexes A, which we have here on the edge of the board, along with two damage tokens. These are the jurors and have the capacity to store C times 3 plus L, and that all plus 3. So that's a total of 21. L is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, times C, which is also 3, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3, 21. The jurors and have capacity to store 21 damage tokens. Players can attack, parentheses intimidate, or heal, parentheses persuade, jurors to add damage tokens to them. Attack modifiers are drawn as normal for attacks, and none are drawn for heals. The first time a juror is attacked or healed, flip it face up to reveal the number. So they're numbered 1 through 12. Certain jurors are swayed by different pieces of evidence, which start on the table hexes C, D, and E. So C, D, and E here is our evidence that the characters are going to hold on to the evidence and if a character is holding a specific piece of evidence he'll have a bonus against a specific number of jurors. A player can spend one movement point while adjacent to a piece of evidence to pick it up. Players can also spend one movement point to take a piece of evidence from an adjacent character, give an adjacent character a piece of evidence, or exchange pieces of evidence with an adjacent character. Each character can only hold one piece of evidence at a time. All attacks or heals against numbered tokens 1 through 4 have a plus 2 bonus for a character holding evidence C. <coughs> Characters with evidence D have a plus 2 bonus against numbered tokens 5 through 8. And evidence E gives a plus 2 bonus against numbered tokens 9 through 12. So C against 1 through 4, D 5 through 8, E 9 through 12. Place a representative token or figure on hex B. That's here our D20. This is the judge who has capacity to store C times 6 plus L damage tokens. Again, L is 3, 6 plus 3 is 9, C is 3, 3 times 9 is 27. So we're going to set him to 27. I'm going to set him to 7 first. And then we'll go through as our D20. So, 27 damage tokens. He can be healed or attacked just like the jurors, adding damage tokens in both cases. However, he alternates between two dispositions each time he receives damage tokens. Initially, players have a plus two on attacks against him. But while in his secondary disposition, players have a plus two on heals against him. And I've set that up right here. I've got a wound marker showing that right now we're plus two on damage. And I'll swap it back and forth with a uh, strengthen token for when it's plus two on heals. Um, unless the judge has the full... 27 damage tokens on him. So unless we get him all the way knocked down. On initiative 99, he will remove one damage token from each juror. Both he and all jurors are immune to all negative conditions. Alright, so we need to get him knocked down so he doesn't keep healing up all of the jurors. So that's our first priority. The city guards, we have two city guards here. They are the bailiffs and are enemies to you. They cannot be damaged in any way, but are susceptible to negative conditions. So we can stun them or immobilize them. Uh, wounding them wouldn't matter because they can't be damaged. The captain of the guard, this is Miles' captain over here, acts each round based on the boss ability card deck. 
However, he acts differently than the abilities written on those cards and his stat sheet. He also cannot be damaged in any way and is immune to all negative conditions. If he draws Special 2, he moves to the closest empty hex adjacent to the juror with the most damage tokens and removes all of them. In the case of a tie, he will move to the lowest number juror. If he draws Special 1, he moves to hex F, or the closest empty hex, and removes 4 plus 2 times C damage tokens from the judge. So that's 2 times C is 3, 2 times 6, plus 4, 10. So he's going to heal the judge 10, 10 tokens each time. If he draws one of his other two cards, the Bayless will perform whatever their, whatever their ability card is on the captain's initiative as well as their own acting twice in the round. So these Bailiffs are going to be messing with us, but we cannot damage them back in any way. That's going to be really annoying. Characters can object to the Captain of the Guard's action by foregoing a top action or a bottom action in a two-character game. Discarding a card, so three players, top action. Discarding a card instead while adjacent to the Captain of the Guard while holding a specific piece of evidence before he takes his action. Evidence C will prevent Special 1, Evidence D will present Special 2, and Evidence E will prevent his other ability cards. Character summons will focus on jurors and the judge, focusing on the lower number jurors in case of a tie. Summons will not focus on the bailiffs, the captain of the guard, or any juror or judge that is at capacity with damage tokens. The scenario will end at the end of round 12, if at least seven jurors have at least 18 damage tokens, C times 3 plus L, the scenario is complete, otherwise the scenario is lost. So they can hold at most 21, we need to get at least 18 on 7 of them. I have no idea how this is going to go. Um, we need to be doing a lot of damage and a lot of healing. All right, I have, still have the same set of cards as before. Um, I'm not going to take the time to swap out cards. I've been pretty happy with my decks thus far. I pr may not need as much movement this time around, although if we're grabbing certain evidence, running around to other um, jurors and whatnot might be important. So, um, yeah, we will just uh, see how it goes here. The, the captain of the guard is just going to heal people. The city guards are going to mess with us. All right. Well... I kind of feel like I need to get, if it's at all possible, get the judge knocked down very quickly so that he doesn't heal um, all the jurors. I've only got 12 rounds. Um, Okay, so I've got my brute with his balanced measure, which is always fun. Um, actually, I am going to swap out some cards because I'm realizing kill an adjacent normal enemy is of no use for the brute. And we're not going to be looting a whole lot. And we're not going to be doing sweeping blows or anything. So we want extra move and attack. 
Retaliate doesn't do anything. I don't know that I really want to take the time to attack the guards just to stun them. I need to be attacking other people. So let's set up big attacks. All right, 10 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's the best attacks and heals for the brute, for Reginald. All right, uh, Jedic, let's see what you're going to be doing. Uh, attacking, attacking. Invisible for big attack. Bottom attack. There's not going to be a top um, trap or anything, but I'll use the bottom attack. I think you're pretty good. Adding heals. Refreshing heals. So I think you're still going to be able to buff and help. You don't need to create a proximity mine because people aren't necessarily going to be moving around. I think attack three at range three. All right, so we'll swap that card out. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Uh, I need battle goals. I have picked my cards, but let's look at our battle goals here real quick. Can't think of a whole lot of battle goals that are actually gonna be helpful in this game. Because this has some really weird rules, but we'll give it a shot. Okay. Jenik, you're about to go pacifist. pacifist. Kill three or few monsters during the scenario. Well, that's a no-brainer. Um, or allow none of your character allies to become exhausted during the scenario. That's probably likely, but we're not going to be killing any monsters, so we'll do pacifist. All right, Reginald, Zealot, have three or fewer total cards in your hand and discard the scenario. We tried that last time. Dynamo, kill a monster in the scenario by causing at least four more points. We're not going to be killing anybody, so there you go, Zealot. So we want you to burn through your cards. And then Furwick, Aggressor, have one or more monsters present on the map at the beginning of every round during the scenario. I think that's a no-brainer because nobody's going to die. Uh, Sadist, kill five or more monsters during the scenario. Well, that's not going to happen. So, interesting. Well, it looks like our battle goals probably will be happening. Um, the only thing we really have to focus on is getting Reginald to burn through all of his cards before this is over. Okay, let's get set up here on a, our nice card trays. By the way, I've probably shown these before, but it's a little off camera. I'm using the BGG card and component holder trays here to keep organized. And it's kind of the only way I could really run three characters all at the same time. Um, let's see. I can show you this by just bringing this camera forward a little bit here. Well, you can see all the cards there, and I've got three of these trays going for all three characters. Okay.
let's set up our big, 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 big attack on the judge with um, Jetic. So he's got to go invisible. Um, and so we're going to set him up to be invisible and then it's plus two attack on everybody. Okay. And that might just take down the judge completely. It's not going to move. It's just going to be setting up. Um, if I put you here, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is nice. This is going to be real nice. Because then you can... Oh, no. Because I need to backstab, so it's a move three on the bottom. Well, I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Um, Reginald is going to move eight to deal a big hit on that guy. Um, with balanced measure. Where's your move six? Skewer. Okay. So skewer balanced measure using your boots and whatnot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we can wind you around to get that. Oh, and you're going to pick up a piece of evidence as well. Um, and then after Reginald hits, um, I want to heal with Furwick so that it flips to heal to attack. All right, do you have any ranged heal? No. You don't have any bottom heal actions. All of your heal actions are in the top. All right. Heal range four, all of your heals range three. Actually, I want you, let's see, you are at ten. one adjacent ally recover them, discarded. You can do that later. <coughs> um... We'll just do the top action here. You're going to have to move, so a basic move. Um, And you'll go after, so you'll go on 48. All right. Um, so I think we're all set up. Uh, city guards are going to go 
on 15, I'm not attacking anybody, which is nice, and special one. Special one, he moves around. Oh, he's going to move to the boss. And heal the boss, or the, the judge. Well, that's annoying. Maybe we shouldn't even attack the boss this turn, since it's all going to get healed, and then his heal will be wasted. Um, but I don't want... I'm going to do 22. I kind of do want to block that spot F, though, because that's where I want um, Jarek, or Jedek to be able to jump to. Actually, he can get 1, 2, 3. He can do a move 5 with jump, so he could jump across the other way. That's fine. That changes things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, let's just see what happens. Okay, so you go invisible. And you set up your bonus attack. So, plus two attack on your next four attacks, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. Singled out is set up, and you are invisible. And create night. All right. I think we're still going to deal the damage, even though he's going to heal. Actually, I could, hmm, Furwick could negate that. We might actually do that. What, do I, what does he have to pick up? Evidence D, evidence C will prevent special one. So if Furwick picks up special one, Discarding a card instead while adjacent to the captain of the guard while holding a specific piece of evidence. All right, so before he goes, yes, he can pick up C and stop it. All right, so we're not going to get the heal bonus um, plus two, but that's okay. Um, so... Guards took their turn, 15 nothing. They're not moving, they're just shielding, retaliating. Okay. Um, Reginald, you have eight movement, six plus your boots. And so we're going to go one to pick up E. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And attack the judge for eight using balanced measure. And skewer goes lost. Oh, sorry. That's the one downside with my setup here. It's all PVC pipe and whatnot. And when I knock the cameras, things uh, get you a little seasick. Sorry about that. Okay. So attack eight uh, plus two, because we're in the wound condition. So attack 10 plus one is 11. So from 27 down to 16.
Okay. Nicely done, Reginald. That was on 35. 48. Um, move four, so we're going to do one and then two movement to pick up C and then forego your top action to object. Uh, special one so that the captain of the guard will not go heal the judge. All right. Not bad. And so then I think that he just foregoes the complete action, right? Um, the guard's action, so he doesn't do anything. He won't move, all that. This is interesting. I might... It might just be good to just have somebody just stay here and uh, object to the the captain and the guard every single time. We'll see how that goes. All right, that is the end of round one. Um, hold on. At 99, though, the judge is not fully damaged. Unless the judge has the full uh, 27. On initiative, he will remove one damage token from each juror. Okay, so we take one token off each juror. This might be getting a little fiddly with all this damage here, but we'll see how it goes. So they all currently have one. They started with two, he healed them for one. There you go. All right. That is the end of the round. We'll move to the round marker. We need to shuffle our guards. Boy, it'd be nice to get that again. If they just would shield or retaliate the whole game, that'd be awful nice. Need to be more careful with these cards. So dropping them is kind of a pain. Ugh. We're sitting here at a table of ultimate gaming that Aldi ordered for the uh, BGG conference room. Um, and he got the high legs, so I'm sitting on bar stools. So sometimes it's annoying to get up and down too much. All right. Okay, one interesting conundrum here. On these jurors, um, they would, don't flip up their number until they're damaged for the first time. And so um, I don't have that plus two bonus for the first attack because I don't know whether it's the evidence I'm holding is effective or not. Okay. Um, so we've set up Jedek uh, for a big old beatdown, and so we're backstabbing here. No, not backstabbing. Gruesome advantage. Although backstab might even just be enough. Let's think about this. He's at 16. Backstab would be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Eight, nine doubled for 18. As long as it's not the miss, it would be enough. And I could save Gruesome Advantage for another day. Um, of course, do you have another way of going invisible? You would need to get 
the smoke bomb back. And the tinker can help you do that if you get adjacent. Let's go with backstab. Um, but you're going to need to move six to get there. A whole bunch of move fives or the move seven. And the reason I say six is because I want you to pick up that evidence. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you wouldn't pick up the evidence that way either. Um, Or just move five and get evidence later. Doesn't say anything about dropping evidence. All right, we will use, we'll just use the bottom action of Grissom Abandoned so you can pick up the evidence. We don't have to waste it or wait for it later. Okay, so you're going very early to take down the judge, uh, which means uh, Reginald can start attacking some uh, jurors. Now, that does also mean that Jeddak is going to be vulnerable to this guard's attack up here. All right, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. We don't have to do that move seven because we can come right in front. One, two, three, four. So a regular move five would do it. Um, So we'll do that, move five. All right, you need to move one, two, three, maybe four. Hmm. I wonder, is the judge an enemy or an ally? For Can I move through him? Probably not, but let's just check real quick. We cannot stand on our move through jurors. I assume the same by the judge.
All right, I'm not going to read through everything on there. I'll just uh, take the one thing that I saw. Okay. Go to attack two. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, we need to get some cards going lost, so might as well start, right? So Reginald's going to move and attack and then attack some more. All right, and then summon. Furwick, our tinkerer, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, so he took some damage. He's now in the healing mode. Fortunately, we can't get a heal off in time. So we're not going to get the plus two, but we don't really need the plus two there. But if you do a big heal, well, we don't need to damage you much more unless the captain comes over. Did you get rid of, yes, recover one of their lost cards? You used that last turn. So let's just set up your heal buff. And then Move five, one, two, three, four, five. Do you have a move five? You have a move six, but it goes lost. You have a move two, move four, and you do have boots. Three loop one goes lost. That's annoying. Card could move to want to get you there. Get you there. One, two, three, four. Let's just move four. All right. Okay, we're set. City guard. Move minus one, attack zero, range two. So attacking at range. And then special one. That's. Healing the the uh, judge again. Well, it looks like you might not be moving because you can block that. Maybe you just stay put and block C the rest of the game anytime it comes up. All right, first let's get Jedic. Um, move five. One, pick up, two, three, four. 
and you have D. Okay, so that's your move five. Then attack three. On your next attack, while invisible, double the value of the attack. And that's going to go lost, and you're going to lose invisible at the end of this round. You get two XP for it. Now, attack three. Add two and gain one when the target is adjacent to any of your allies. Add attack two and gain one when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. So seven, eight, nine, because it's adjacent to none of its allies. We don't get the plus two, but it is attack nine doubled for attack 18. Plus one is 19. It's enough to take it to zero. I'm going to set it to the 20 is the zero. Okay, so he is at zero. And that card goes lost. All right. Um, Well, that's how you can gain invisible, the Cloak of Invisibility. All right. I knew there was another way for you to get invisible, so we can use our gruesome advantage on another big old attack. Okay. So that was six. Um, guards, nope. Uh, Reginald at 34 is going to move to attack to so attacking this juror right here so attack three and we find out he is number eight so he has four damage and eight is vulnerable to D which the scoundrel has, okay? And then move forward, jump, attack to target all enemies moved through. Okay, so we're gonna get two XP for this. We're gonna go, well, there's no point in attacking him. Um, well, we can still attack, he just won't be damaged, but I don't get any extra piece, so there's no point. One, two, three, four, so these two here, uh, eight, attack two on eight, plus zero is two more, that takes you to six. And then attack two here. Plus two is zero, so three damage on number seven. All right, we want to get Jetic sitting over here. That card goes lost. All right, 35, guards. Uh, guard number two, move minus one. So he only moves one. Closest space he can attack anybody is here. So move one. Um, and he does to attack at range, actually. He is attacking at range, but that gets him within range of Jeddak. So attack four, because these are elite. Plus two is six. Um, well, you get the shield. Or I could just make a card go lost to negate that. But now we'll use the shield. So it's only four.
All right, and then guard number five does not need to move because Reginald is in range. So attack four, minus one is three. You've got a shield one, so that's only two damage. All right, um, forego a top action. So we're going to discard. Hmm. Well, I'm not getting the top action either way. So we're just going to do this. And then we're going the top action to stop him in place. Do we want to still move? Yeah, we'll still move. Two, three, four to help out Reginald. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to back up to Reginald's turn real quick and use his scroll of stamina. One ally of the French Red recover up to two of their discarded cards to let the Tinker get his cards back so that the Tinker can let Reginald get his cards back, or his lost card back. All right. Okay, and the boss is locked. And the judge is maxed out, so no healing. End of the round. All right, Abraham Pierre says, Hey, Jeff, do you enjoy Gloomhaven or Mage Knight more as a solo game? You know, that's a very interesting question, Abraham. Um, I played Mage Knight last Thursday. I've been playing Gloomhaven on Mondays. Um, I think as a solo game, Mage Knight is, uh, the better pure solo game. Um, but, uh, because Gloomhaven, I'm playing three different characters at once. And so there's less of a, you know, personal investment in it, whereas in Mage Knight, you're one Mage Knight hero leveling yourself up, and you can play as just one hero. In Gloomhaven, you still have to run at least two or more characters, and I find running three works best. This, these three characters are the ones that uh, I was playing with my two teenage sons. Now, I actually find Gloomhaven a little easier to play on stream, or better for streaming, than Mage Knight. If you watched Mage Knight Thursday night, um, it was a lot more quiet. Gloomhaven has kind of quicker, easier decisions and easier for me to narrate through. Mage Knight gets pretty deep when you're trying to maximize a hand and I get lost in thought and it's harder for me to articulate out loud. So I think Gloomhaven works a little bit better for solo play on the stream than Mage Knight, but uh, the pure solo play experience I really enjoy them both, a ton of fun, but Mage Knight probably gets the, gets the win there. How's that for equivocating? But thanks for the question, and thanks for watching. Okay, um, so we need to shuffle our boss over here. I don't need to shuffle any other decks. Okay, um, we know that 7 8 here are um, effective for Jeddak. We need to get him over here. We need to get Reginald fighting on some other big baddies. So let's. 
one, two, three. If we just did a move three, not even with jump one, two, three, move three to jump there, get you looking at those three. And then um, attack five using your battle axe on those two. Let's see what happens that way. Okay, and so if you get out of the way, you're not going to do it very quickly. Gruesome advantage. Um, oh, I set up a, a big one. I mean, that's basically an auto kill. But I kind of, I don't necessarily want to, well, on a special two, the boss is just going to go heal everybody. Who cancels the special two? It's probably D, which would be the scoundrel. So the scoundrel can just do that. Evidence two, but he need to be next to the dude. All right. Um, okay, you took another attack, so we do need to flip this back to attacks. Okay. The most important thing is to keep the judge from healing folks. Well, to keep the captain from healing the judge. Although, having the judge down doesn't help at all with... winning or not. It's just the jurors. And the jurors need to be at 18. So we need to remember around nine or so, we don't care if he heals the numbers that we have up there. We just need to keep the captain busy. All right, so one, two, three, move three, attack three, attack three. Well, that's good, that'll put you right there. And we've got you, so what are you going to do, Tinkerer? Um, I think it is worth letting... Um, yeah. Recover one of their lost cards. Actually... No, not everybody's going to be adjacent. So yeah, this is the right thing to do. And then for top, um, let's have you attack at range in case um, Reginald uncovers somebody for you to attack. And so we'll have you go late at 61. And you're going at 54. And 16, and then guard, 55, move attack strengthen, boss, special 2. So you're going to go on 17, which is almost before everybody. Special 2 is to heal a juror. Right. Moves to the closest empty hex adjacent to the juror with the most damage tokens and removes all of them. Move to the lowest number juror. So he's going to come over right here where we've been dealing damage, which means we could keep him from doing stuff. Now, do we... I could have you just go back to negate that. You'd have to do a basic move to get there. And give up some attack.
Um, but I've only got basically nine, ten rounds. I still need to deal some major damage on a lot of these jurors. I don't know, do I need to stop the captain every single time? All these specials. If I just come over and deal all this damage, he's just going to take it away, so it's wasted. So let's just keep you in place. One basic move to, and then forego the top action. All right. So that's the boss. Next is 54 before 55. So 54. Move three with jump, one, two, three. And then attack five, one XP. And using my battle axe, I can attack both of these guys. So attack five here. Plus one is six. So seven damage is here on number 12 which I think is effective for him. Yes. E. So you're in good spot. And then attack five here. Plus one is six. On number one. Oh, good. That looks good for... Furwick to shoot at. All right, but it is the guard's turn. Um, guard number two, move minus one. So they only move one space and they strengthen. And so all the guards will be strengthened for the next turn. And over here, move minus one, um, attack zero, strengthen self. So he's not strengthened yet, he'll be strengthened next turn. So attack four, misses. That is well timed. Furwick breathes a sigh of relief. Okay. Perfect. One ally with range three may recover one of their lost cards. So we're going to do the recover one, two, three. Recover the smoke bomb. Set up our double attack. And then uh, top attack, attack three at range three. Right here, number one is vulnerable to evidence C. So attack five. Muddles, which doesn't do anything, but we draw another one. Two X, awesome. So that is attack 10. This guy is at 17. One more attack and he will be where we need him to be. Okay. We used our battle axe, let's remember that. All right, I need to use the black knife on my next attack with Reginald just to put a curse into the uh, enemy's draw pile. All right, um, that is the round, end of round three. Uh, shuffle our miss, hopefully back up to the top of the deck. All right. How are we doing, guys? I think, I don't know, I don't know the pacing of this one. We're a quarter of the way through and we've got 
one of our guys damaged. It might be a waste, but I just can't see it being worth letting the captain do whatever he's going to do on his specials. Because that takes out so much healing. Healing the judge for 10. Not the end of the world. I can do a couple of beatdowns on him again, but... Healing a juror completely? That's... I'm going to double check to make sure I read that right. But that is painful. Move closest, remove... All of the damage, yep. Not going to do that. So basically we need to keep Furwick and... Jetic close by. To keep him from undoing all of our progress. As long as two of our characters are damaging each turn, then we'll we'll see how that goes. All right, one more attack here on juror number 12 and we're good. We might actually swap. Once it's only special two that we really care about, I will swap and just keep Furwick keeping the city guard at bay, I believe. Need to stay away from these guards though. They are strengthened, so they will have advantage next turn. Okay. So you need to deal a beat down on 12 here. That's got plenty of whatnot and wherefore. So let's have you do a couple of big attacks on 12. You need to do one more attack on one. Um, and it doesn't have to be super huge. They can take 21, you're at 17. So it could take four more. Huh. If I get you up to there, you could keep him at bay. One, two, three, just in case. So I need you with a move three. Let's do these. Without looking too much harder, that works. Scoundrel. Um, you might need to move one, two, three, four, five, okay, which you can do. Um, you have a minor stamina potion. But, yeah, we'll set up so that you could be, come over and get all of their discarded cards back. Okay, 
Rule 5, Attack 4. Assuming that you're not going to have to forego a top action again. All right, that's everybody here. Guards, strengthen until the end of this turn. Shield plus one. They do not move. So if you move away, which you don't have time to move away, so you're going to get poisoned. Darn it. All right. Special one. You do need to move so that you can stop the big heal. All right. Well, going first. Ah, you're not going to get poisoned. Jeddak's going to come over and take the poison hit for you. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Anyway, move five. One, two, three, four, five. And then attack four, add wound doesn't do anything, gain one adjacent, or attack three adjacent to any of your allies. So I could attack this guy for five, but I don't know his number, but I kind of do want to know his number. Of course, it's attack six over on either of these two. Five to learn a number or six. Let's attack six. Let's see, adding wound doesn't do anything. Jump, invisible. Oh good, you are immune to poison, so you are gonna take the poison and it's not gonna matter. All right, attack six here on number seven. Because he is vulnerable to your Persuasive Intimidation, attack six, plus one is seven. Three that you already had makes it 10. All right. Then the guards at 15, this guard both adjacent, he's going to attack. It went first, shield one, attack plus zero, poison, but he's immune to poison. Plus two, so attack six. Well, that hurts. Ooh, that would put you down to two health. You don't have any heals right now, but you do have some big heals later. We had a range. Or just, I don't want either of these cards to go lost. Am I willing to let two of these cards go lost? Not just yet. So we'll take the six and then you just need to get healed. Whew. Yeah, get healed. Or go invisible. Um, oh wait, that needs to be two more for here, plus one. None of their allies. Are we going to count these jurors as being allies of each other? I guess they are. And they probably are, so they're adjacent to each other. So that makes that card kind of useless. Now that I think about it, it's only good for the judge. Unless I pull one away, or push one away. Okay. Where was I? So you took that hit. This guard here does not move. Had nobody to attack. All right. Toxic Bolt over here. Um, 
you need to move so that you don't go heal. Or Furwick needs to move so that the captain of the guard doesn't go heal the judge. Right? So you can move four. One, two, three, four. Do I want you up there? One, two, three, four. No, I want you here. Put you here. It's the same either way. Now let's go here. So that should move four and then no top to forego special. All right. Um, so, Reginald, attack 6, 2 XP, 6, 7, 8, because he's vulnerable to your persuasiveness. Attack 8, plus 1 is 9. Just one back for a 10. And then that card goes lost. Attack two means attack four plus one is five. You are full at 21. You are fully persuaded and or intimidated. All right. That's our first one. Um, and that's the end of round four. Okay. Round five. Shuffle these guards. Oh, that guard was supposed to be strengthened. Doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Round four. Round five now, third of the way through. Well, it's going to be these two cards. Tinkerer. You don't have a top move. But you could move up there just to get next to. Or you could get two back for next turn. You're going to do these two cards. We're not sure what they are. We'll see what happens. And then Tinker, what are you going to do? Heal at range. Oh, yes, that's what you're going to do. You're going to heal. And possibly heal. Okay, won't worry about that too much. Guard, move minus one, attack plus one. So they're moving slowly. And special two. So you are going to keep the captain from healing our progress here. 
So that means Furwick can do stuff, but Jetic can't. That's okay. Oh, but you were going to go invisible. All right, so we're just uh, discarding two. You have to be adjacent to this guy. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then forego your top action to keep the boss from doing anything. All right, guards are at 70. Uh, 15, Reginalds. Shield one show up during the next shield one, so get more shield up. Attack three, push two, attack four, stun. Um... I don't think that space is movable. I think that's a wall through here. I don't think this is a legal space to be. Well, it has to be because there's jurors up on there. So we can move to that way and heal. All right, cameras. Lost cameras, come back. There we go. There's one camera, give me the other one. All right, now we're back. All right, who are you gonna attack? 12 is done. You're not going to attack anybody. You're just healing. This guy is at 17. You might as well attack. Even though you don't get the plus two, go ahead and just attack four. All right, so we'll do the top attack. Attack four. Stun doesn't do anything, but we get two XP. Attack four. Plus three. Wow, that's a waste because all we needed was the four. You are at 21. All right, that card goes lost. Bottom action. Are we setting up more shield? Or are you going to basic move? I feel like... We don't really need all that much targeting. Neither of those guys have been targeted yet. So let's just basic move. Actually, you've got your, yeah, you got your leaping cleave. So we'll go here. And with that attack, I was going to add the curse. I said I was going to do that already, so we curse, which means we add a curse into the monster deck. Um, 
I let that card go lost, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six more rounds. You'd be down right as the game's ending if nothing more goes lost. Yeah, we're just going to basic move, like I said, so that. All right. Um, okay, that was the Brute. And then Kerwick here, move to heal all adjacent allies. So you heal one. And then... Heal six, range three. So heal six. And get two XP and that card goes lost. All right, and then guard Move minus one, so they only move one. Okay. No ranged attack. All right. That's it for round five. Round six, almost halfway done. I've got two out of the seven. Okay. So... Short rest. Okay. And short rest here. All right, um, you're going to leap and cleave these two just to see who's sitting here. And then bottom. Probably a basic, or well, maybe you stun. Actually, you need to stop doing stuff. So we'll do that. You need to really get over here. We got four more rounds before we don't need to worry about healing um, special ones yeah there's not well he is going to heal on every single turn we need to keep special twos from happening and special ones until we don't care about the heal. Which need to survive through round nine. All we've seen is special ones twos. There are two other cards in here that I actually don't care. That just lets the guards attack twice, which I'm fine with. Find out who those two are. T 
Tinker's probably going over there. Two, three. So you've got attack three, range three. One, two, three. Come on. Cameras, there we go. One, two, three, one of the hexes is within three. I can still only get one of those guys. You do that last turn. One, two, three, four, five. That's one I could forego. Yeah, let's try this. Just for something different. All right, Tinker. Just give us some options here. Not sure what to do. This is a lot depends on what the boss is going to do. All right. Guard. Move plus one attack minus one. Special one. All right. Which we don't want happening. So that does free up Jetic. Unless we swap. But no, we're going to keep that. So uh, 1620. Furwick actually goes first. So you're going to forego a top action to lock the boss down and then move four. One, two, three, four. Start beating up some of these guys up here. And then um, Jetic is next. Move three, one, two, three, attack three, minus one is attack two on nine. And nine is vulnerable to um, Reginald, right? Yep. So that's a Reginald. And then attack three, one XP. Two X, so that's attack six. I'll take it. Would have been nice if it was bigger, but I'll take it. All right. Okay, Reginald. Actually, no, next is the guards. Move plus one, attack minus one. So the guards can move up to three. This guard here only needs to move two. 
any attacks for three against Furwick went first, so uh, not strengthened anymore. Attack three. Missing that curse. Yay for the curse. Okay. And then five, just moves one here to get on Reginald. Attack three. Minus one is two. Minus one for shield is just one. All right, first Reginald will 1 XP, Leaping Cleave, attack three on this guard here. 2X for attack six. On number six. So that, I believe, is another one for Jetic. We need to get Jetic down here. Yep. And then three over here plus one is four on number two. So one is five. Okay, and that's one for Furwick. All right. So Jetic needs to come down here and finish these guys off. Reginald needs to head up there. There's no more else for him to care about. All right, um, so with your two here, we'll just do basic move of two, since you're headed up that way. We get a balanced measure with that. Okay. That is everybody. So that's round six, halfway done. Now would be a great time to not get a special since uh, Reginald's right here to lock this guy in place if needed. Okay, there's that. And we need to up here. We need to get lucky with this boss. Three more rounds before we can cut him loose. Okay. Well, Furwick's easy. You got two cards left. And I already know what you're doing, Brute.
So a balanced measure over here and over here. And then you're going to move seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that you can start whaling on these guys. And attack four. All right, guard, move minus one ranged attack, boss, move plus zero attack plus zero. Okay, so let me just make sure. Um, if he draws one of his other two cards, Bayless for whatever ability twice. So he's not gonna move or anything. Um, I don't want to give up Reginald's attack, so we're going to let these guys attack at range twice. Kind of annoying, but there you go. Um, do we want to let... Well, let's see what happens first. Jedic, move seven with your winged shoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, we'll attack four on number seven here. Four plus zero is just four. All right, next is the guards. And they're basically going to attack twice. So this guy's going to step back to get out of disadvantage. He does move the one to get out of disadvantage. And then attacking Furwick for four. Missing. And we'll do it again. Minus one is three. You can heal yourself three. Let's remember to do that. And then number five attacks Jedic for four. Minus one is three. And again. Four. Okay, you need to go invisible for a while. All right. So that's the guards and the boss's turn now. Um, Furwick. Nobody's adjacent. Let's attack three on these guys here. Um, range three, one, two, three. Actually, let's attack these two here because they're further away. So attack three. So that it's that corner right there with our noxious vials. Gain one for each target, so we're going to gain two XP. Uh, poison doesn't matter. So attack three on this guy up on top. Plus zero is three. And we discover that 
it is number five. So the other guy for Jetic, but we don't really care. And then attack three on this guy, plus one for four, plus this one here makes five on number 11. Somebody else for Reginald. All right. Um, and then heal three at range three. We could heal either of those guys for another three. Um, let's heal three here on number 11. All right, um, you're going to refresh all of your spent items. So that you get your boots back. So that you can move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that you can attack six which is actually attack eight with curse. So we're putting this curse back into the deck. So attack eight on number nine. Plus zero is just eight. Two back. For a 10, that is our last 10. You are at 17. All right. That is it for this round. Okay, let me shuffle over here. Round seven, go to round eight. So we still care about special one for this turn and next turn. All right, because 18 is fine. We always care about special two until I have a buffer here. I don't think I have yet. Okay, short rest. here. Getting low. Only got a couple more turns with the Brute. Need to do as much big damage as we can with him. Let's 
take a damage and pick a different one because that's our attack five card and move card. Actually, balanced measure would be a great one to pick now. <laughs> and I did. I'm awesome. All right. So those are your two cards. You need to do attack five there and then move one, two, three. Okay. Oh, you forgot to heal on your turn. That's okay. All right, you will stop special one, which we do still need to do. So you might need move one, two, three, four. You're not going to need the ink bomb, but you one, two, three, four. And then attack range six, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that would be good. Attack at range. All right. Guard. Move attack strengthen. Boss. Special two. <sighs> On 14, you're going at 12. All right, well, we can do that. All right, special two. Yes, okay, so. Um, oh, but you have to forego your top action. So uh, you don't have jump. You have to go around the long way because of that dumb guard. All right. One, one, two, three, four, five. Move five, forego your top action. But um, recover up to two of your discarded cards. No, you're just going to short rest anyway. We'll do that after you short rest. They're not going to be attacking anybody this turn, so that's fine. You don't need to go invisible just yet. All right. Might as well refresh, though. It's, nothing's going to change because you're not adding wound to attacks or anything like that. So, Okay. Uh, that's 12. 14, special 2, not happening because the scoundrel stopped him. But I really lucked out in picking the right evidence for the right characters based on his special twos are generally early, and special ones are generally late. Fifty-four is next. So attack five, one XP. Plus two is seven. Doesn't matter. Gets us to twenty-one. And then move three with jump. One, two, three. Neither of those go lost. 
All right. And then you're going to move four and attack six at range five. You're attacking number two down here. Oh, you need to keep on moving. Just in case, I'm going to put you over here. Oh, no, I don't want. Move four. One, two, three, four. There you go. You're adjacent. And then attack six, range five. One, two, three, four. You're attacking number two here. And we're going to give you, let's see, that's going to go lost, 2 XP, and we're going to give you advantage on this. Eagle Eye Goggles. So attack 6, plus 1 wound, or plus 1. So it's the same either way. So attack 7 because the wound doesn't do anything. But they're vulnerable, so it's two more, so it's attack nine. So we're at 14. All right. That's that, that. Did you jump ahead? Well, the guards had no one to attack. Um, actually, no, that guard does go attack Reginald. Move minus one. Strengthen for next turn. So attack plus zero. Attack four, minus one is three, minus one is two. This guard here, um, he, yeah, the guard went before Furwick moved closer, so that's the closest space to go, so he's just going to move one that way. All right, um, end of round eight, round nine. So this is the last round we have to worry about special one. I think I want to swap these two so that Furwick can still lock him down for special two. No, but then that would, it's still, it's the same guy who needs to attack these three as locks down special two. So that doesn't really do anything other than it does give the, the da big damage attack. All right, um, short rest. Um, okay, so you're going to do this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, four or five. You need to move four or five. Well, let's come back. 
uh, Furwick, you need to damage two in a big way. Do you have any big, big attacks or heals? Heal four, range three. He's at range four. Heal five, range two. Means you have to get to here. One, two, three. So you need to move three. Move three. Okay. Let me think about this. The one I'm not going to care about after this turn is special one. So whoever has special one Yeah, actually Furwick's better. Okay, we'll leave them as is. So let's assume Because Furwick has more health as well. So let's leave that there. Let's get you invisible. and potentially get you in place. All right, uh, no decks to shuffle. So guard, let's not move. Regular move attack. Boss, let's not do much. Special one. So that is Furwick, okay. All right, this is the last turn we care about, special one. Okay, 5079, so 11. So you can at least get in the place. Oh, one, two, three, four. Do I want to swap? No, because I need to forego your top, and I don't want that to happen. So one, two, three, four, five, and going invisible. already sitting over there I forgot to take it off five and invisible and create night So you're set up for a big attack, assuming we get to pull one off next turn. Um, 16 is next. 
So you're going to forego a top and then move three, one, two, three. So you lock down special one on your turn, heal three. There you go. All right, 32. Um, attack three. Don't want to push or move to attack two. I'm just attacking three, which is actually five. Plus one is six. So now there's 14 over here. All right. And I'm not going to do either of the bottom actions because I need cards. I need you to stick around as long as possible. All right, guard. This guard up here does not move. Attack plus zero strengthened. So minus one missing. So it is just the minus one. Four minus one is three. And then guard number five, he's invisible, so you come over to Furwick um, and attack four plus one plus zero. So it is the plus one, so that's five on Furwick. All right, that is the round. Now I no longer care about special one. As long as, so all these 21s are fine. I still care about special two. Please don't be special two. I really need Jetic to get off a hit. Two, three. Couple of hits actually. All right. I might need to swap so that Jetic can take down the boss. Okay, nothing other needs to be shuffled. Round nine. All right. Um, boy, I hope, I hope, I hope. I hope this will go off. Uh, if it's special too, I need that move in there. So, yeah, what am I thinking? Okay. Brute, short rest. Actually, if I long rest, I get all that back, but I don't really care about any of that. And I could get health back. No. Need to get the attacks going. Okay.
Ooh. You could stun that guy. Oh yeah. That might be good. All right, Tinker. Okay, well, let's do this. All right, give me some luck. Give me some luck. Guard, shield one, attack zero, poison. Not moving. Boss. Special one. Yay, I don't care. Now I want all the special ones I can get. Okay, good, so you still get your attack, which is now, right, 16? Yes. Oh, the guard goes first on 15, believe it or not, wow. So you're not gonna stun. All right, this guard here, shield one attack plus zero. Strength has gone away. Poison, so attack one, attack four, minus one is three, three, and then this guard here attacks, oh, and you were poisoned, and then Furwick is attacked for four, Plus one is five and poisoned. It's not good for you. Five, you know what? We will ignore that. Yep. Discard a card to ignore that. Five, we don't want to do five. All right, um, 16. So you're invisible. We're going to Oh, we decided that they are allies, which is annoying. That's why I had the attack in there. Well, we will move. So, he's not adjacent to any of my allies. So we're just going to do the top, move three, attack three, because it'd be attack three anyway. So we're going to attack five on number seven right here. Using that. And I could still move seven if I needed to. So attack five on number seven. Plus one is six, plus four is 10. He needs one more damage to count. Okay, and that goes off, two XP. And that goes lost. Okay. And you're no longer invisible. All right. Um, But we're going to have you go invisible again till the end of your next turn. Uh, 
Okay. 32. Um, so we are going to move four and stun adjacent enemies. So this guy is stunned for next turn. That's important. And then attack three, which is attack five. That card goes lost. No, I don't want that to go lost, do I? Because I need one more turn. Yep, yeah, we're not stunning him, darn it. All right. So attack five. We'll just attack five up here on top. So that makes it attack seven. Yeah, that's better. What am I thinking? Attack seven. Plus one is eight. You were at 14. Plus eight is 21. It's 22, but we max out at 21. All right. All right. And one XP. Okay, down here, um, we're going to Heal four, range three. It's actually heal six. So one, two, three, four, six. So that is now 20. All right. You are safe. We're coming off here. You have 20. Those that are fully safe, I'm going to flip over. They've already got their full 21, and we know nothing's going to change that. And you've got 21. Even if they go down to, they're going to go down to 20, 19, whatever, because he is going to heal, but I've got enough time for none of that to happen. All right. 20. Okay, um, and then that was the top, heal four, range three, and then the bottom, attack three, range three, poison, gain one for each enemy targeted. Um, we're going to go, doesn't matter, because I can't damage that guy at all. So there, get two XP, and attack three on number two. Minus one is two, but still that makes you safe. 21. And then on number six here, attack three. Plus zero is three. So you're at seven, now you're at 10. All right, one more, one. All right, this is gonna be, and that card goes lost. Oh, back on your turn. We need to recover two cards here. All right. On your turn, you move to F and you heal this guy 10, which means at the end, at 99, everyone heals one. So now you are at nine.
and you are at 19. I still need to get one more damage to you. One, 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 and one. All right. Okay. It's the end of round 10. Two more rounds. This is going to be tight and we're going to have to get lucky. Don't want any special twos. All right, none of those need shuffling. Okay, short rest. Uh, attack five goes away. Um, not going to matter. So I won't worry about it. All right, you're fine. So you are going to, okay, just in case, one, two, three, four, five, you might have to move five. No. Oh. You have to move. You can't both attack and move. You are at range three if you move one. If you have to move, it's a problem. Let's hope you don't have to move. All right. Brute, those are your only two cards. Easy. Furwick, if he has to move, you still need to do one damage on seven. So let's move to that. And attack three, range three. Heal three, range three. Attack. Yeah, let's just do this, see what happens. You still got plenty of cards. You are still invisible until the end of your turn. Okay. All right, let's hope for not a special two. Guard. 70 move minus one attack plus one. Not so great. Boss. Special one. Yes. Yes, we are in business. Okay. So, 11. Um, 
attack three, one XP. So attack five on this guy, number seven. Plus six maxes him out at 21. And we need to remember he's actually one more than everybody. Everyone else went down to 20. He is at 21. And then attack four. Um, so it's attack six. Plus two is attack eight. So two back for 10. So he is at 17. All right. So that's all that. Seventeen. If you can book it out of here, you're no longer invisible. If you go up here, one, two, so they're only moving one. Yes, move minus one. So if you do basic move and still attack three, oh, one is enough. Um, Stay, stay, stay within three. Oh, you've got your boots, but you got to stay within range three to attack or heal this guy. I think you're taking the hit no matter what, but you can always discard cards. So, um, move two, you're gonna get trapped in. Is that okay? Yeah, it's better so you can stay within range. You have cards to discard if needed. And you have cards to discard, so that's fine. Um, so heal three so that it's not at disadvantage or anything. So that's just a straight up three. We don't modify or anything. So that takes you to 20, which is the same safe as everybody else. All right. Okay, I need to remember um, these three here were never attacked, and it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore the numbers, but um, yeah, they're not safe. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are safe. All right, we're gonna win. Uh, let's play this out though. Okay, so you basic moved and healed. Okay, guard at 70. Uh, guard here does not have to move. Attack plus one. Oh, wait, you still get your turn, sorry. Um, actually, you can move and attack. This is your last turn, but why the heck not, right? Basic move attack or attack and get shield. Let's move to attack. Um, 
because it is your last card. That'll be a meat shield. And attack on five, so attack two. Miss. Oh well. And then you'll discard and you'll long rest. All right, now guards. Uh, this guard here, move one. This guard here can move one and then attack plus one. So attacking for five, minus one is four. Four, no big deal. All right. Um, it's the end of the round. Round 11, I need to go to round 12. It's a foregone conclusion, but let's play it out. And the reason I say foregone is because Jeddak can always move up to the city guard in case he was going to go heal somebody that we didn't want healed. Oh, he's back up to 20, by the way. And... Everybody else healed one and four, and now they are at 19 and 20. Still one more than everybody else, but it's okay. All right. And we need to shuffle Reginald's cards. And Reginald is long resting. He has two cards in the discard pile. Okay, Jeddak, short rest. Because you might need to go. Move five. Nope. Well, you've got to move seven, so yeah, that's fine. Um, actually. I want you to have the low initiative just in case. So we'll take you down to one hit point, but we'll give you the low initiative to get out of here if you need to. All right. And then short rest for the tinkerer. Okay. All right, uh, Brute Lung Resting, you need to low initiative, move, and then, hey, might as well attack if you need to, or if you're able. Long resting, and then you're gonna super heal early on and you're kind of stuck unless you can jump and you do not have move with jump so you're not moving at all but you can heal all of these guys to damage them even more just in case not not that it's going to matter but Okay, here we go. Guard, move plus one, attack minus one, boss. 
So they're going to extra move and attack. There's no specials. So we don't need to worry about any of that. Um, move seven. Could you get up to any of these guys? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could jump, but you can't add to movement. So no. Um, so let's just move here and you get extra attack on this guy. So it's attack four, five, six. Hey, maybe we get a two X. You never know. Plus one is seven. Three back for 10. Um, And then over here, it would have been nice to heal five, but we'll heal three at range three, just so in case something crazy happens, you get three health over here. Um, bottom card is nothing. Okay, guard. Attack minus one, so it um, so you move up here and attack for three. Minus one is two, and you attack for three. Plus zero is three, and then you do it again. Attack for three. Plus one is four, and hey. Rather than dying two cards away, so that you're exhausted at the end of the turn. And here, attack three. Missing. Okay. And that is the end of round 12. Everybody heals, but we've still got seven. Jurors convinced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. We did it. Let's see what the conclusion is. Well, I admit to being skeptical at first, but I have heard all I need to hear, the judge says. Bring Jarek in. If he cannot explain all of this suspicious evidence, we may need to take some drastic actions. A minute later, Jarek stands before the judge and the rest of the council. So, the judge questions, what do you say to these accusations? I say that the Sin Ra have hidden in the shadows for long enough, snarls Jarek. These fools have exposed us earlier than I would have liked, but it is of little consequence. The time has come to topple you all from your seats of avarice and complacency. Reward three experience each juror with at least uh, 18 damage tokens. So, seven, 21 experience, which is going to level up uh, Jedic and Reginald, if you remember, Furwick re leveled up at the end of last round. I will not go through the leveling up. Um, I will do that before our final mission here, which will be next week. Um, a reminder, this Thursday I'll be playing Magic Realm, 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And uh, I believe I said I was going to play the elf character on a solo uh, tour through the realm. Um, and then next Monday, we'll be playing the final episode of the Capital Intrigue campaign. Uh, and then I'll be taking off for probably six weeks or so. I've got a bunch of travel coming up and getting ready for BGG Spring. Um, some of you may know that I run the conventions for BGG with a lot of help from a lot of other folks. Uh, BGG Spring comes up the end of May, about 100 or so tickets left. 
BGG Con in November, about 100 tickets or so left before it sells out. And then uh, BGG at Sea, the cruise in August, we have about a dozen or so cabins left. But uh, that's it for tonight. Thanks for following along on this adventure. And um, you all have a good evening. Thanks for watching.